Okay, part two, real hi-fi help. I was interrupted just before so I had to stop the video. Just want to continue on this speaker. This is the speaker that I think will change the entire audio industry. Um, you owe it to yourself to listen to the speaker at least once to really uh, just get a glimpse of what it has to offer. Like I said before, it's the human qualities. It's the way that it um, has this uncanny ability to like fully let go of uh, uh, of the energy. Um, this feels like the ultimate combination of having a really good speaker like uh, oh yeah a really good speaker like Martin Design Bird One one of the best speakers ever in the in the history of of speakers fantastic uh, separation detail so much resolution so much 3D very intense it was a bit difficult getting it to fully integrate. Definitely one of the best ever Martin Design speakers and one of the best speakers ever in this world. But it always had, it was always a bit like uh, having to fight with, with a small child. Uh, you could never really get it entirely right and fully settled and fully integrated and, and balanced and, and warm. Uh, on, a, on a long period listening to a lot of different types of music. It's a lot like having that speaker, Martin Design Bird 1, coupled with like an avant-garde uh, horn speaker or one of the best horn speakers ever that costs like a ridiculous amount of money, like a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars. It's a lot like having both of those worlds. And then also, it's a lot like having a uh, like the best B and W uh, speaker. Um, I don't know what the models are called, but I heard one single B and W speaker that I really liked uh, that had most of the things going on uh, with the sound that were really top notch. And so it's like having those three speakers. Um, Oh yeah, and this BMW speaker, I think it was like the second or third biggest model or, or something like that from 2020. And it's like having these three speakers combined in one speaker. Um, absolutely ridiculous. And you have to think, you have to take into consideration that this is a 98 dB speaker. What that means is that you really only want to put a uh, tube, connect tube amplifier to this speaker. You can have a good uh, transistor amplifier, like for example Negra or Spectral or some other really top-notch transistor sound, and it's just not going to sound right because it's totally different religion of sound. Uh, you might be able to somehow make it sound magical, but it it just isn't a perfect fit. It, it doesn't have the same type of um, components in it, and it's not built in in the. Uh, it's not meant f for this speaker, so definitely. Um, now, if you had, for example. Uh, a Negra transistor amplifier or a spectral transistor amplifier, which is some of the best uh, transistor gear in the world, I would then try and couple it with something like a Verity, Peak Consult, Martin Design, Karma audio speaker, maybe even a BMW speaker, um, to, to make that work right. But having actually owned that type of sound and heard it several times, there's always this, what I consider, this is a, a personal, um, personal preference. I always feel that with these top-notch brands, there's always a tiny bit of a lack of sympathy, realness, real color, 
like really releasing the energy, uh, feeling it deep, deep in your soul, the, the, the music. It's always, you know, extremely well layered and, and detailed and separated. But, but in, 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 in the long run, it just gets a bit, oh, it's a bit nice, it's a bit boring, it's a bit hesitant, it's a bit conservative. And it just doesn't feel like you're really connecting with the music, even though it's on a ridiculously good level, like with Negra and, and Spectral. And so, of course, having Negra and Spectral and Martin Design and Rarity Audio Speakers and all that, that is, of course, something that I <laughs> would like to own again. Um, but I feel that uh, even though it, 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 they have elements that are probably a tiny bit better than the audio note sound, I feel that audio note has the, the life energy, the uh, especially with the top models, the life energy, the the, the 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 true authentic detail, and not this hi-fi detail that you get really tired of when you, once you've owned a, an expensive piece of hi-fi equipment. I find that this happens with most audio gear that is really expensive, mm -hmm. that that it in, in the long run you you end up getting slightly bored and and, and feeling that someone's uh, you know put on the, the the handcuffs, you know, someone's you know threatened the <laughs> the uh, the artist that, that that's playing um Saying that they're not allowed to do what, what what they want to do, you know, you don't you don't really feel the 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 true spiritual uh, connection a, as you do with with a proper audio note setup, and there's only one really proper way to do it, and that's and that's not taking any shortcuts. I mean, trust me, people, I've I've tried most cable plug speakers amplifiers, DAC, CDs, streamers, and all that, and it always comes down to the same conclusion, that you have to try and use the same brand on, on basically every single part of the chain, and it's, it's really annoying, and, and especially with a speaker like this, you know, you can, you can hear what every single part of the chain is doing. I've never ever experienced that with another speaker before. I've owned a lot of speakers. Uh, Verity, Top, B and W, Audio Vector, a lot of other speakers, uh, Avalon, um, many other speakers, Rockport, um, uh, a long list of speakers, really expensive speakers. And they all had a lot of good stuff going on with them. But they always, they all had for me, this is a personal thing, but they all, always had like this, this, this thing where you felt like the handbrake was, you know, was pulled up. It, it was never really clicking with, with all of the rest uh, equipment that you had on your chain. Now, if Rockport or Verity Audio or Peak Console or whatever company it is, if they all made every single part of the chain and you as a consumer had all of their products on every single part of the chain, I mean, speaker, amplifier, CD, cables, and all that. I mean, most of these things would sound a lot better, and I think that this is one of the reasons why Audio Note is so good at what they're doing, because all that's going on in their speakers is very uh, much the same that's going on with the cables, and the amplifiers, and the CDs, and the docks, and, and, and everything, and it just comes together in a way that um, it's the only time where I've ever experienced true and, and, and deep joy and long lasting joy and a lot of the other experiences has been a lot like owning a, um, a very expensive car that you just can't afford and you just keep on thinking oh yeah one day I have to sell this thing because I can't afford it you know but it is so nice to try, you know, it's, it's very fast, it's very cool, it does a lot of this and that, that's very unique to this brand. But, you know, you want, you want sustainability, you, you want something that can really last, you know, forever. 
and uh, this, this is the first time I've ever, I've ever found it. But I also have to say that let's keep it a bit real because I have heard this speaker new, okay, when it wasn't uh, burned in several places where people put some really low grades, uh, uh, really old audio note gear and in some pretty horrible rooms. Either the rooms were too small or too big and everything together, it sounded okay. It sounded better than, than, than a normal system did. But it just didn't really, you know, catch my attention and, and really make me think, wow, I need to own this, you know. Um, it, it, it was also a bit, you know, la di da. Uh, when, once you get up to uh, the middle class audio Nokia, like an M3 preamplifier, standard M3 preamplifier, and you get like a standard... Uh, I don't know, uh, audio note, quest, conquest, uh, monoblock. And you get a, a, a pretty decent uh, audio note speaker like I have here. Um, then on, Only then do I consider it uh, worth my time, something that actually at that point starts beating, I would say 95% of what's out on the audio markets, at least 95%. Only from that point on, if you would take, if you would put any foreign piece of equipment that doesn't belong on that chain, if I would put a Fenden Hull, an MIT cable, or something that's a completely different religion on that system, it would totally destroy the sound and remove the naturalness and the integration, the balance. There would be some, some cool uh, effects going here and there, some cool priorities for a short period of time. But, you know, you would, just, you would get a very dysfunctional sound. So what I'm going here, going with here is that if you have an audio note speaker or an audio note amplifier or any piece of audio note equipment, if you haven't heard that on a system that is completely audio note, and I'm talking cables, plugs, everything, if everything on that system isn't audio note, then you haven't really heard the audio note sound. I've heard a lot of audio note sound that sounded really horrible, either because someone tried to stick with a really uh, old audio dis uh, audio note design, like a 20 year old audio note design, and they wanted to upgrade the uh, capacitors in them and they put some Jensen capacitors in them that were uh, the same value and it, it just completely destroyed uh, the integration and, and the balance and I'm just here to say that um, there is a lot of audio note equipment not being set properly up and I hope that this video will help most of you guys to 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 experience what I've experienced because uh, I must say uh, most audio notes um, setups have really uh, disappointed me they, they were very limited uh, and they had either a very harsh sound or a very uh, moldy, old, and restrictive sound, and it has nothing to do with the audio note gear. Okay, so I've also heard audio note at uh, shows, hi fi shows, where I thought, really, is this it? You know, for this amount of money, you know, uh, I mean, my own uh, more simple audio notes. Uh, <laughs> setup sounds a lot better and that's not just because I've custom made it for, for my ears you know I know two other guys where I've heard their setup that is identical to the uh, setups that I've heard at these new audio uh, note hi-fi shows where I just thought why doesn't it sound that good I mean this is a newer version of that same gear why doesn't it sound as good and then I later on tried that gear I borrowed some of that gear home uh, and put it into my setup and then I thought wow 
it actually is a lot better than my uh, amplifier, than my CD player, than my DAC, and there is nothing wrong with the equipment. It's just that um, a lot of this gear is just not, it's, just, it's completely new. It hasn't been broken in, and it hasn't been uh, burned in, or whatever you call it. And they just put them in these horrible big uh, rooms. And when you have a room that exceeds uh, around 30 square meters, uh, when, there's, when you be begin getting up to these 40, 50, 60 square meter rooms, you lose a lot of the pressure. And the sound um, gets very limited. And this doesn't just uh, entail audio note equipment. We're talking about equipment generally. You generally don't want from this wall to the back, uh, this wall behind the speaker, to the back of the position where you're uh, listening, you generally don't want more than five, six, or seven meters. If you have more than five, six, or seven meters, then you're most likely losing a lot of the stability, the balance, the, the stuff that makes everything you know hold together as, as, as one. And um, so, so that's a very good uh, tip for not just audio note, but most other uh, manufacturers don't display your equipment in these rooms with um, windows uh, behind the sound equipment and behind the listening position. Don't don't have these ridiculous distances of seven to twenty meters from one wall to the other. You know, it's just going to totally destroy the sound. You know, you're not going to recognize what's going on um, it's a very inconsistent sound so just just to let you guys know try if you've ever got the possibility um, try and, and carry this this tweak out you know have it on a wooden floor to, to create that lively uh, sound reactive sound and then create your own um, basis here underneath the the uh, the platform it would create a lot more stability and as I did go for this lower frequency setting with a single wire use the standard clip that comes with it it's very good it's one of the few clips that I've ever heard that that that, that, that is really good uh, to integrate the sound and from that point on you will be able to access the sound. I have heard so many audio note speakers set up in small crooked rooms, just like mine. See, there's, there's no wall to the left here. You've got this area here, got about one and a half meters distance from the speaker to here. And then on the other side, you know, it's almost touching the wall. You know, when you've got stuff like that going on in the room times two or three, and you at the same time got a really big room or a very small room, um, you're not really gonna gonna listen to to the speaker. And if you've got the speaker, you know, go go with the proper uh, tubey sound. You know, take something like Jadis or Tube Ghoul. You know, that's audio note worthy. Don't settle with. I'm not gonna mention their names, but um, don't don't settle with you know really cheap equipment, um, tube equipment. You know you don't want some overly warm tubey sound that only costs a couple of uh, thousand dollars. You know like uh, five hundred dollars or thousand dollars or two thousand um, dollars new. You know you generally don't want to touch equipment like that and and put that on a uh, a fifteen thousand uh, dollar audio note speaker because this speaker is going to tell you the full um the full story about what's going on with the sound exactly what cables are in your amplifier what tubes are you using on your amplifier um, do you have a pot meter that's you know about to get uh, worn down? Are 
there are some issues uh, w with whatever gear you have. You you can hear everything with with the speaker, and um, just to let you in on a on a secret here, one of the things that actually make the speaker perform a lot better than at the shows is that I have used an ISIL 8 mini sub axis power supply. That is one of the best matching power supplies for an audio note system and it doesn't matter what class it is that fully integrates with the audio note sound um, and I highly recommend that I actually don't recommend any other power boxes I've tried gigawatts they're very good but just not a totally different uh, religion for yeah other type of gear I've tried many other expensive boxes, audio quests, also very good, but in a completely different way. This is the most natural, fully integrated, balanced, um, what's it called? Some kind of DC re regenerating uh, box here. Isolate mini sub axis. If you have an audio note system, you owe it to yourself to get a box like this. This is basically the best ever box that you can get for the price. I personally think that this is a better box than the top Gigawatt boxes, the top AudioQuest boxes, and those are really, 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 really good boxes. This has the ability to make everything that you do on your sound equipment speak the same uh, language. It has the ability to make all the different plugs and cables become fully unlocked. So every time you're testing a small little tiny thing, like if you're doing a small tiny change on your streamer, or your DAC or whatever, you will be able to hear these small changes. 